Hey there, thank you so much for joining us for Obi-Wan Online. We're so glad that you're with us today. And just to start out, we've been in this series called Disorientation, and here's why. Life, as well as our human nature, tends to orient us to uh, certain uh, behaviors, certain patterns, certain ways of thinking. And and in some ways, um, uh, that's that's great. Uh, Keep doing and believing in in what you're doing. Uh, There's lots of things that we're doing that are great. That said, there are some things that we're doing, some ways that we believe that they're just not working. And, And Jesus wants to disorient us from certain patterns and certain ways of thinking. But, but here's the thing about Jesus. His, his ways and his values seem so different. They seem so counterintuitive that they seem weird. It's, a, it's like Jesus is bringing disorientation to our lives, and it's like he's pulling a reversal on us. Because let's face it, with some things, normal isn't working. Now, I want to encourage you, it may not feel natural, it may seem counterintuitive, but as we learn and try to live out Jesus' ways and values by faith, we'll discover that, that his way is actually the best way to go. Now, there's a lot of people out there that, that love babies, and babies are awesome. They're, they're cute, they, they smell good, they're cuddly. Yes, they, they cry a lot, but they can't talk back to you yet. They can't escape from you. They're, they, you know, they're in your arms, and then something happens to babies, right? It's called, they become toddlers, right? And, and don't hear me wrong, toddlers can be awesome, but that it is starting to get to an age where they start to talk back, they get give their opinion, uh, they, they might run away from you or walk away from you because they're now more mobile. But something that's really funny about toddlers, they, they're getting to an age where they're wanting to be seen, uh, to a point where parents can't even catch a break without them around, i.e., you, the, uh, some of you are going to probably know what I'm talking about if you're a parent, you can't even go to the bathroom alone, or you can't even go to the bathroom without being bothered. It's like you shut the door just to go to the bathroom, just to get a moment of peace, and your toddler's hand. Or are going up under the door, or mommy, where are you? Or daddy, look at me, right? Now, what, what a toddler is going through is very, very normal. They want to be seen, they want to be noticed. And, and can I say, we, we all want to be seen or noticed. Why? Because we need attention. And needing attention isn't wrong, it shows that we're human. But here's the thing, if we're not careful, it can become unhealthy and we can look for attention in some unhealthy places. So something that often becomes our normal orientation is unhealthy attention seeking. That's what we're going to address today and Jesus brings disorientation to this pattern with a very, very powerful solution. You probably recognize the type of attention I'm talking about, it's like, It's constantly, look at me, look what I did, do anything you have to to get noticed, do something only to be seen, feeling slighted when others get noticed but you don't. It's like, wait a minute, what about me? And you might not say it, but you're kind of feeling it in your heart. Maybe it's putting others down to keep the the attention on, on, on the person that's feeling slighted. Sometimes unhealthy rivalries start because of it. It's like, we're better than you. It's like, no, we're better than you and we'll prove it. You see, all of us want to be noticed so we can struggle with seeking unhealthy attention. And when that happens, there's something Jesus values that can help. Now let me pause so that I can get a couple things out of the way. It's not wrong to want to be noticed in a significant relationship. It's not wrong for a person to get honored in a public setting. And it's, it's not wrong for someone to self-promote their book or their business. That, that's, how they, that's how people will know that they're out there and what they can offer. 
offer. It, it's not wrong to accept a, a great compliment from someone. And it's not wrong to share when you've done something good. It's about doing these things only to be seen by others. It, it's about always thinking about the spotlight being on you instead of thinking of ways to bring attention to others. It's about craving attention so much that we don't bring attention to God. So let's go to the Bible to discover what Jesus' powerful solution is. One day, Jesus was in the middle of a message he was delivering to a crowd, and he was encouraging them not to do things just to be seen by others. See, Jesus knows. Jesus knows that we want to be seen, but he doesn't want it to turn into uh, something unhealthy, so he addresses it. And Jesus starts out with an example by, 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 uh, about giving to those in need. And, and he says, hey, give to, to others in secret. Don't announce it to everyone and, and don't do it just to be seen. Uh, then he goes on to share another example. Listen in to what he has to say. It's in Matthew 6. He says this. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who can't be seen. Your father will reward you. Listen to this part. Because he sees what you do secretly. See, prayer is one of Jesus' solutions for unhealthy attention. You may wonder how. Uh, you'll see this thought about prayer on the screen. Prayer is an instant connection to God who constantly sees me. Think about it. God is always available. He sees you and he's paying attention. Jesus is teaching us to fill our attention need by going to God. See, it's more important to have God's attention and approval than the attention and approval of others. His attention doesn't waver. He loves you no matter what, and he'll reward you, which is really cool in what Jesus was talking about it. Think about it. Even when we get the recognition that we want, or even when we, we say that we get to the top, it, it typically doesn't last that long. That's, that's why you hear uh, of things like 15 Minutes of Fame. I mean, think of all the music bands out there that did so many things, tried to take so many gigs to record themselves, push and push and push. They finally hit it big, and they only end up being being like a one-hit wonder, right? Now, now speaking of one-hit uh, one wonder, um, or one-hit wonders, I should say, Business Insider uh, shared that one of the top-selling uh, one-hit wonder uh, uh, songs out there is, um, get this, you ready for it? Eye of the Tiger. You remember that song? Is some of you thinking of Rocky? It's like, dun Dun, dun, dun. You're getting pumped right now, right? Now, now do, you, do you even remember who, some of you are going to, but do you even know who sang that song? It was Survivor. Yes, baby, Survivor gave us Eye of the Tiger. Now, I have to say, I like other songs by Survivor, so this is a debatable one. But, but here's another one. I'm going to give you a hint. Hey, Macarena, right? Even Star Wars loves the Macarena, like, right? They're, they're just, you know, doing their thing there. Or how about, how about this one? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it right now. Now watch me whip. Now watch me name. I, I know, I know, I can't do it. You're laughing at me. I get it. I'm, I'm just having a little fun. But as you can see, even when we get to the top, it generally, the, 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 the recognition, the notoriety, it doesn't often even stay there. And one hit wonders is just one evidence and proof of that. Anyway, some of you know what it's like to uh, uh, connect with others with short attention spans, right? Um, this is another, you know, proof of that uh, uh, when we can get the, to this point of just relying so much on other people and it gets to unhealthy. But, you know, people have an attention span like the, like the dog from up. It's like you're, you're talking to them, you're bearing your skull, and then it's like, squirrel, 
<laughs> it's like you're talking to them and you want some attention, you want some recognition, and they're like, squirrel. <laughs> uh, you, you know the people I'm talking about, but don't look at them if you're with them right now. Just pay attention to the screen. Pay attention to my voice, right? Now, I mentioned before that it's not wrong to promote yourself. That said, social media can be addicting to some, and it, it can become all about the clicks and likes. We, we live in a day and age where it's just so tempting to gain unhealthy attention because we have so many outlets where we can gain it. I mean, think of people who lived before technology was around. Yes, people still wanted to be seen, but the temptation for them to most, most likely wasn't as constant because they didn't have the technology we have. And so we've, we've got to be very careful. Even your most significant relationships won't be able to fill your need for attention all the time. Why? Because they're not perfect and they're not God. It could be a friend, a boss, a, a church leader, or even a parent. Make sure you're letting God fill you with his attention. Sometimes when someone doesn't get the attention that they shouldn't, that they, they, uh, that they, that they want or that, they, uh, that, that they're uh, hoping for, they, they chase after unhealthy things or relationships. It could be something online that they, that they know that they shouldn't view, but they're going to do it anyways to seeking out another relationship that could end up either destroying their marriage or another significant relationship they have, or it could even affect their relationship with God. And can I, can I just pause for a moment? If you're close to doing something destructive, please, please, I lovingly and graciously plead with you, please talk to God about it. He can help and then confide in a friend that will help you step away from the destruction you know, here's another example. Sometimes when someone doesn't get the attention they feel they deserve, they, they cross a line and they start to demand people's respect or they demand people's love. And we know that's not healthy. Truthfully, the list could just go on and on. But the reason I gave lots of examples is to show how deep this thing can go for all of us. Not so that we'll feel bad, please don't hear it that way, but so that we'll think about why we do what we do and to ask God to help us change if necessary. And so that we'll do proactive, healthy things that can fill the attention we need. Again, one of Jesus' solutions for that is prayer. Prayer is important and there's lots of reasons to do it. And there are many benefits, again, one of them being that it's an instant connection to God who constantly sees you. Jesus encourages us to talk to him privately. One reason is so that we keep our motives right. He wants us to do things that honor him and help others, not so that we can just be seen by others. Another reason being that God sees us Guys, he really sees you, and that's what matters. You know, prayer can often be misunderstood. Many think they can't pray. My answer to that is, if you can talk, you can pray. Because that's what prayer is. It's, it's talking to God. And sometimes we try to gauge if we're good at prayer based off of what we hear publicly. Can I say, you'll hear me later in the message, pray a public prayer. Public prayer is important, but please remember that public prayer is for everyone. So when you pray to God, it's going to sound different because it's you personally talking to God, not publicly praying on behalf of God and a crowd of many people. Here's another thing, and I want you to think about this through an example. Wouldn't it be weird if a really good friend of yours that you've known for you know, a while comes to you and just starts acting differently, speaking differently, to the point where you're like, who is this person? I don't even know them right now. And then you ask them, you're like, dude, why are you talking to me this way? 
And then they say something like this, well, you know, I saw how a great relationship you have with Johnny, and, and Johnny acts this way, and he talks this way, and I, I was kind of hoping for the same type of, I know we're friends, but I was hoping for the same type of connection, so I, I just started observing Johnny, and I, I just thought if I started talking and acting the way he did, that our connection would be greater. And it's like, no, just be yourself. Just be yourself. That, that's, what, that's what God wants. God's the same way. So many deprive themselves of this awesome connection with God simply because they don't sound like someone else. Can I say, you're not supposed to sound like someone else. You're supposed to sound like yourself and talk to him normally the way you'd usually speak. Please get this. He likes the way you are. He's the one that made you. Be yourself with him and let him give you the attention you need simply by talking with him. See, Jesus knew prayer would be misunderstood. So in his message, he teaches us to pray. So, so let's look at it and then we'll unpack it. Matthew 6 says this. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Then he says this. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, just as we've also forgiven those who sin against us. And then, and then he ends this example of prayer with, keep us from sinning when we're tempted, save us from the evil one. Now, I, I, I want to say this in context. Right before Jesus teaches us how to pray, he, he encourages us not to repeat prayers over and over again to the point that they become empty, uh, and then this prayer is probably the most repeated prayer in church history. Just saying, just saying. Now, now in, in all seriousness, repeated prayers aren't wrong, but if we're not careful, the words can be just said over and over again and not really be directed at God. Don't hear me wrong. Not, not everything is about a feeling. Sometimes we have to push past what we feel and commit our prayers to God anyway. But it's important that our prayers are directed at God and come from our hearts. You know, my, my wife and I, we've, we've been married for over 21 years at this point. And just being transparent, we've had times where we're not always feeling the relationship, uh, uh, that, that, that maybe it's gone a little stale and, and, and things like that, and it's just kind of, we're just kind of meandering throughout life at that point. And, and again, because it's not always about feeling. There's had to be times where because of the commitment we've made to each other, that, that we just push through and, 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 and stay committed in our, our relationship, but that's not how we want our relationship to always go. We, we, we want... We, Robin and I want our hearts to be directed towards each other. That is what we desire. That is what we want. And that's when our relationship is working the best. Again, there's times where it's not that way. And, uh, and we might have to commit and kind of push through that. And it can kind of be the same with God. I, I'm not trying to sit here pretending that 100% of the time, it always has to be about feeling. It always has to be about this. You, you know, no. There are times where... By being committed, by being committed to God, where we, where we push through, where we push through. And I, I'm sure that in the same way you have relationships, whether a friend or family member that I just talked about with, like with me and my wife. And, and God's the same way. He wants our hearts, not just our words or actions. Jesus wasn't giving this prayer because it's needed to be repeated over and over per se. It was a model to follow on how to pray. So let's take a, a, a few to break it down so we have a better understanding on how to pray. Because there's so many facets to prayer, even in this model example. Matthew 6, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. One, one reason that we talk to God is to bring attention to him. Jesus starts out with, God, may your name be honored. 
You know, prayer is an instant connection to God who constantly sees you. And we've been talking about that and building on that foundation. That said, honoring him is our opportunity to see him back, to put the spotlight on him by thanking and celebrating him. It keeps our relationship from, from being all about what we need and want. It reminds us that he's most important, that he deserves our attention, and that we live to make him known. It's like, you're amazing, God. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. As I live my life, help me to make you known. Help me to show others how awesome you are. Jesus goes on in Matthew 6 to say, may your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. So another reason we talk to God is to ask him to reveal his purpose. You know, Jesus spells out very clearly in the Bible what the kingdom of God is like. And then he encourages us to pray and cooperate with God so that his purposes come to pass. And I have a question. Are you cooperating with God as he brings his purposes to earth through you? You know, we talked about this last week, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But the, the Bible, is that's how we gain direction and purpose. God, God's Bible is his very, very words. And it, it's been, it doesn't happen all the time. I'm not trying to pretend that. But at times, it's been so cool to read the Bible and then get his purpose and direction specifically. And guess what? that can happen to you too. It really, really can because his words are alive and they're relevant and they're for you. In Matthew 6, Jesus continues. He says, give us today our daily bread. And so another reason we talk to God is to ask him to provide for me. This is asking God to provide for your needs. Now, to be clear, it doesn't mean we always get the answer we want. Jesus is teaching us to depend on God, not, the, not that the answer is always yes, sure. You know, as ki kids depend on their parents, but that doesn't always mean that, that, that parents' answer to their kids is yes. That said, ask him. God loves providing for us. He's not stingy. He's a giving and generous God. Ask him to do so. Don't be shy about it. And be specific. God, don't just say, please help me. Be specific with him. God, please help me financially. God, I'm discouraged. Please encourage me. God, I'm lonely. Please give me a friend. God, I'm worrying. Would you please calm me down? God, this situation is so hard for me. Give me the strength to persevere. Jesus continues with his model prayer. He says, and forgive us our sins, just as we've also forgiven those who sit against us. So another reason we talk to God is to say, I'm sorry, and to help me forgive others. See, even after you come to Jesus, it's so important to ask God to forgive us of our sins. Not because we need to fear losing that relationship, but so that the relationship can move forward. God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Help me next time. Thank you for cleaning me off. Help me to do better the next time around. It's also so important to forgive others so that the bitterness doesn't rule us. God, God, you've forgiven me of some horrible things. God, I've hurt you in, 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 a, in so many ways. Help me to forgive others that have hurt me too so that I can live free. And then Jesus Close out his, closes out his prayer saying this, keep us from sinning when we are tempted. Save us from the evil one. So another reason to talk to God is to overcome temptation. Guys, let's admit it, we're all tempted. I'm tempted, you're tempted. Heck, Jesus was even tempted. It's not wrong to be tempted. That said, we just don't want to be overcome by our temptation and give in. So we ask God to give us the strength to overcome our temptations. He, he promises a way out. Ask him to show you the way. 
God, help me to overcome this. Give me your power and direction. I can't do this without you. I need your help. But can I say, if you give in to the temptation, go back and ask him to forgive you so that the relationship can move forward. And then the other thing that Jesus closes out with, and that, that we see it's another reason that we talk to God. He says, save us from the evil one. So we talk to God for protection. Guys, we have an enemy, and not, not here to scare anyone or to cause fear or to be weird, but we have an enemy that's out to destroy our lives and our souls. It's not fearing that. It's acknowledging that and being aware and asking for God's protection. God, I, I have an enemy that will try to trip me up. Help that not to happen. God, I have an enemy that wants to destroy me and my family. Please protect me. Please protect my family. Please protect the people that I care about. As you can see from Jesus' prayer model, there are many things that we can talk to God about. We all want to be seen and noticed. And like I've been saying, there's nothing wrong with that. It's when it's only about doing things to be seen. It's about when we're so always thinking about the spotlight on us that we can't handle when the spotlight is on others or we're not even thinking about bringing attention to others ourselves. It's about craving attention so much that we don't bring attention to God. As we talk to God and as he fills us with his attention, maybe... Maybe the chase for unhealthy attention would lessen. Maybe what others see just wouldn't matter as much. Think about how much of life can be wasted or, or how wearing it can be, wondering if others are watching and what are they thinking and, 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 and man, am I being seen? Am I being noticed? Maybe if we were confident in the attention he gives us, Hear this, it's so important, I said it earlier. Maybe it would remind us that God is who is most important, which will help us live, which will help us live life to make him known in our own hearts, reminding ourselves he's most important and even showing others, hey, there's this God and he's most important. Let's pray. God, I, I, I come before you and I just ask that you'd be with all of my friends watching right now. First and foremost, would you help them to know there's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be seen or, or noticed. But man, we can really chase after it in some unhealthy ways at times. And uh, Lord, would you, would you show us, God? Would you show us if there... If there maybe is a way that our attention seeking has become unhealthy, would you help us to talk with you about that? Be vulnerable, be honest. Lord, would you, would you show us, would you help us to see that, that prayer really is an instant connection to you and you do see us. You are paying attention. Would you help us to desire your attention? Would, would your, when, when we're just not getting it enough from others, would your attention be enough? You know, there could be a couple of you watching today and, and you're realizing for the very first time that, he, wow, Jesus so much saw me. He, he so was thinking of me that he went to the cross for me. And, 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 and you might just say something like this, Jesus, forgive me. Uh, forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me of my sin, just like your prayer motto asked me to do. But I thank you that you saw me and you loved me anyways, even through my sin, even through my wrong. You still loved me enough to die for me. Would you now lead my life and would you consistently help me in this life to find the, the attention need that I have from you, God. And God, for all of my friends watching, again, maybe even this week, God, 
Would, would you encourage them to, to come to you, to, to talk to you, to, to, from their heart, talk to you about things, not only so that they can get their attention need from you, but so that their attention can turn to you as well, because God, you are worth it and you deserve it. We love you, God. We thank you for this time that we could pray together and, and learn from Jesus' model prayer. And we pray these things in your name. Amen.